This isn't just, hey, let's go have a soccer team. It's how do we strengthen community through soccer. We just see, as a community, the connections we're able to make through soccer, the excitement that people have for soccer. So it's clear that there is that love for the game. Lansing wants a soccer team. This is a soccer community. And if we do it right, it can work. My name is Eric Walcott. I'm the president of Lansing Com NFC. Uh, in my day job, I'm a government community vitality specialist with MSU Extension. I moved to Lansing for grad school in 2011. A couple years later, Lansing United started up. I reached out to the club and was like, hey, is anyone talking about starting a supporters group? And so we had then the you know, few, year, few good years of Lansing United, and then obviously the Lansing Ignite adventure, and, and then here we are. It was exciting to say, hey, we're going to have pro soccer here in Lansing uh, playing right downtown. Things were good. They had like the third highest attendance in the league. We were planning initially to do a lot of things differently in year two, should that come around. When we didn't, it was shut everything down and that was it. Dixon kind of pulled the rug out from under the club and the community and decided that financially it wasn't worth what he was putting into it. And that, and that was the end. Within a week after that, a few of us had been kind of talking like, hey, is this something we could do? What would it take to run a club at this level? We put out a call on social media. We said, anyone who's interested in this idea, let's come to Ozone's, let's talk about it. You know, I, I figure if five, 10 people show up that night, we probably, you know, have a few beers, talk about what it would be like, go home, and that's probably it. It was standing room only. The bar was packed. You know, to those of us that were kind of that I kind of at that point had been leading the conversations. It was really an affirmation that Lansing wants a soccer team. Right now, Lansing Common, we're signed up for about the majority of our squad. All right, so we're looking for just a couple players. One of the things we're looking for, especially out of a day like today, is toughness. Freezing cold weather, probably the worst, worst coldest day of March, and you guys are out here playing. Last year was we're bringing soccer back to Lansing. We wanted to put a good product out there, but mostly, and it, it will always be a focal point of trying to recruit for Lansing, from Lansing, and no matter what. I really appreciate your willingness and want to play for this, this local club. Year two is gonna be an interesting year for us. Uh, I believe that we can actually be a little better than we were last year when you look at results on the field. Okay, we will be a different team, we will be a young, so we play in the Midwest Premier League, in a little bit higher level, a little bit more professional looking environment, but still all teams in Michigan. And that, that was really, really important to us. Our longest road trip is around two hours. And in terms of keeping costs low, that's really important. With building on what we, what we did last year with finishing second, I'm not gonna say if we don't win the league, it's not a successful season, but that's certainly that next step that we'd all love to see the team take. Welcome back, Lansing Common fans. I'm Luca Maloney. This is Cameron Klang, your broadcast partners for today for Lansing Common. Cam, today they take on Tulip City in the Midwest Premier League. How do they match up today against Lansing Common? Well, Tulip City United, they actually started their first game in the East Division. I think it's going to be a real shift this year. It requires the older players to take on more of a, of a role of a leader and show the young players the way forward on basically, we're not pros, but on how to become more like a pro. Because I think in the Midwest Premier League, that's what you're going to get. U23 college guys that really are looking for a home in the summer to continue to play and become better college players. Uh, last year we also had guys that were 28, 29, 30 years old. So they're guys still chasing the dream, wanting to go on to the next level, and there is a big difference. Well, Julian Burge is just as cool, calm, and collective in that central midfielder role as they come by. He's an older gentleman, but you wouldn't see that on the playing pitches. You know, he is that guy that scored that goal last year against Detroit City. I'm Julian Burge. I grew up in East Lansing, Michigan. I'm currently a middle school counselor and uh, assistant high school soccer coach, and I play midfield for Lansing Common. I found out Lansing Common was coming when Ignite folded, and then Oaks ended up telling me he was going to be the head coach and he wanted me to play for him. I, it was something I just couldn't pass up. That's okay. I can actually move on from that. What I can't move on is from people that can't actually win, but they stop just short because things get freaking hard for them. That is where the line between common and uncommon competitor is. Now today on your shirts it says Common FC, Lansing Common FC. Be uncommon. Be uncommon.
Go get a result and enjoy your day. Coaching background is 22 years. Uh, started at a, at a really good Division One level. When you say Eastern Illinois, most people think of Tony Romo, they think of Sean Payton, they think of, yeah, it's a football school. But the actual level of soccer played at Eastern Illinois when I was there was phenomenal. And then I took the job at Spring Arbor, became the Lansing Common FC coach literally right after my last season at Spring Arbor. To go off the head of Uziak. Shaheen! And that's the goal that breaks the deadlock! The, the, the level of the game being played throughout the Midwest, which happens to be pretty much the, the, the lay of the land for our league, for the Midwest Premier League, I think it's just a, a, a great place to be. It's a good place to call home, and, and the soccer level is high. And that'll be full time here in Lansing. Hey, we're disappointed with that. We should be. We should be very disappointed with that. But we're always, always going to focus on possibilities. Got a lot of possibilities for this year, do we not? This is the type of team that I absolutely love. This is just a very, very, very brief preview of what we can be the rest of the season. The stands are almost full, boys. There's people that care about you. There's people that care about us and us moving forward. So we have to reciprocate. All right, boys. Coming on three. One, two, three. Coming. Coming. Hold on, boys. Clean up the bench. My name is Rufus Isaacs. So I was born in London. And so I was a goalie as a kid. Now I'm a lot older and I don't, I don't really play, but this club is a way for me to keep connected to soccer. I started going to Ozones to see Premier League soccer. So then when Lansing Common started up, I had some connections there to some people that were involved, but this was a great opportunity to get involved and do both the, the community thing, but then also get involved in the supporters group as well. Lansing has a lot of parks, but we also know they get trashy and especially with the Beacon Field set up where there's two soccer fields in the city that local kids use. It seemed like a really good connection for us as a community focused soccer group to be engaged in. People really enjoyed it. So then we started trying to have a park clean up approximately once a month. And it's been a great way for the supporters group and the people involved in the club and the players to get together. I could be in some other organization, but this gives me the opportunity to watch soccer, hang out with some great people, give back to the community, play drums. It's, it's a good way to, to be engaged with Lansing. Look more ready, and that's a long ball from Ty Uziak over to Voigt. Voigt, first touch, and scores! Voigt brings it down with his right foot, and with the same foot, strikes it to the top corner of the net. And that will do it for halftime. Lansing comment up 1-0 over Everybody the Everybody in this team plays a role. If you're asked to be a sub, you freaking put your chin up. If you get your chance, you come out and you make a difference. If you're asked to warm up and you don't go on, that's the life. That's sometimes life. But everybody here needs to be dialed in to finish out a good 45 so we can get three points for this team. So guys on the bench, be ready to make a big impact. Let's go. Oh. Let's go. Warming up on the sideline is Gershom Sylvain. This is the exciting debut that many around Lansing have been looking for, the, uh, the star from Holt High School. Hi, I'm Gershom Sylvain. I'm a Lansing Common player, raised in Lansing. I'm currently attending the University of Detroit Mercy and also playing on the men's soccer program. He's quick. Okay, he's big, so we're not going to try to go over the top, but work that channel between the, the right back and the right center back move. Coach, coach, Shoulders! You know, I wasn't trying to have any problems oh, with dude, no, like no, that. Of course not. I was just eager. And, I'm I good. Think I'm one of those dude, players. I can manage egos, right? And you and you don't have one. You're a good you're a good player and a humble kid. So enjoy your 30. All right, let's go. Let's go. I mean, I was born in Africa, but I was really raised here. I came here when I was five. So for a club like Lynx and Common, I kind of just saw that as an opportunity to play for my city. Look at that move into the middle. And that's gonna be a corner kick, but a clever move there from Sylvain to get around his man. Looks like it's going back post. Kevin Payne puts it back in the middle. It's Sylvain! It's Sylvain with his debut goal for Lansing Common, and what a moment for the young man. What a beautiful play. That corner went to big Kevin Payne, and then Johnny Oaks reached out to me um, immediately when he reached out. You know, I gave him a confirmation, like, yes, I want to play. There's nowhere else I would want to play, and 
being in my own city and traveling five minutes to practice, knowing the guys are, that are around me. And, and when I'm playing, a lot of people in the stands are, I know are, are from the city, so it was super easy. We were left with a lot of questions after Ignite disappeared and Common answered a lot of those questions in a way that was really right-sized to the city of Lansing and to the potential fan base. Being able to come out and support your local sports team, uh, but being able to do that, come together and know that the $5 ticket is at the end of the day going to support a really good cause and going to lift up other organizations that are doing good in the community, I think is really special and really resonates with the, the people who are our neighbors in Lansing. In moments, you have the potential to look like the best team in the league. And in other moments, we look like we got a lot of work to do. All right, I'm just going to end on one thing. I'm with you and I'm for you. For some of you guys, it might not seem like it. Well, I didn't play as much as I thought I should. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Not only are we here to help you win soccer matches and have a good experience and have fun and get ready for your college teams or wherever you're going, we're also here to help you grow and learn. I just want to make you better. So when you go on to your next thing, you're better prepared to handle what you need to handle mentally. That's all I'm here to do, boys. Proud of you. Congratulations. Good, solid win. But we got to keep going from this. We got to get ourselves into a groove and a rhythm, and I think we can, and it's coming. For me, individually, uh, I like this level. I, I think that I'm cut out very, very well, and, and I've found my niche. That's just why I continue to want to be here. One of the reasons, in terms of what I can do well and where I fit best. Individually, it's a, it's a perfect fit for me working with exactly this type of player and helping this player um, achieve their goals. Right now, at this time, I know I'm where I, where I need to be. Great footed shot to Ethan Brent. Comes up with the save, but can't get the second one, and that's a goal. Now Lansing find themselves two goals down. Jules, no more goals for them this half. Yeah. We get to halftime at 2-1, that's the objective. Now Shaheed, quick feet. Over to oh, Voigt, now Voigt is on the one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Voigt, one touch past the keeper and it's in. And Lansing Common pull one back 10 minutes before halftime. And now Sylvain wins the ball back. Into the middle, puts it in and it's a tie game. And Sylvain stays with the man. And it's Jack Foyt. That's really great. News on my end. It's my last training session for Lansing Com. I am on my way out to go back to Coach College. Uh, and I would be your coach for the rest of this time if it wasn't against NCAA rules. I just can't because I'm going to Coach Mooney's school. My whole family is in Illinois. I'm from there. I actually started coaching there at Eastern. That's where I started coaching a long, long time ago as an assistant coach. I always thought I could, I could stay here probably for the rest of my life, but I could not say no to it and then think along the lines of having regrets in the next three, four, five, ten years. I've absolutely loved every single bit of my time here at Lansing Common. You guys are special group, man. And it remains to be seen, but I think you guys have true, true potential to go and win the league. Thank you guys. Appreciate you very much. A really difficult moment in the club's short history. Difficult moments like that really show what the, the team and what the organization is really made of. It would have been completely understandable for anybody in any position of importance to lose a step. And I think we learned a lot about each other and a lot about the club um, from the way that everybody responded. Brent Sorg, I'm currently a detective sergeant with Lansing Police Department. You know, been involved in soccer ever since I was in high school. In year one, I was on as an assistant. In year two, I had talked with Oaks about, hey, my job is not allowing me to be there every time. But I can come in. If you want me to run a session, I'll be there. I can come try to make some home games. Then we had gone golfing, and he said, hey, I got to share with you. I got the job at Eastern Illinois. He said, so I'd like you to take the reins and, and finish it out. 
a coach coming in doesn't change the goal. Really, the team sets the goal, and they did. They decided that that's what they wanted. Yeah, Oakley as the coach kind of helped drive it, but let's be real, every team wants to win a championship. A lot of different players in that box is delivering his services to. Off the head of Payne, rebound and in! It's a wonderful goal off of a set piece is Ramsey Shaheen! It's Lansing common one, B-I-H nil. Sylvan, still going. Sylvan, 3-1! Oh, what a sensational strike! And a great individual run by Gershom Sylvan! For me, it was about learning from our past and then growing from our strengths that we've what we've done to get to this point. We knew what it was going to take to put us in a position to play for a championship, which is really what we wanted to do at the end of the day. Oh, ball to Wells. He's on. Wells inside the box. Shot. Goal. Dies to his right to make the save. Back-to-back -back save there from Ethan Brandt. Forced to come up big there. What a great goalkeeper Ethan Brand is. Oh, good ball over the top. Oh, good effort. Shot. And that's going to be a goal. Strapping up a goal here in the 31st minute to knock this up. Super late in the game. I got the ball, and you know, I'm going down, down the line, and I'm like, yeah, this is the one. My head is going straight towards goal. the course and you just kept battling. He absolutely stood on his head today. Absolute class. Absolute world class. If that doesn't happen, this game is in their favor and we're, we're walking out of here with no points. So it's there for the taking. You, you set yourself up for one more. It's, it's for the cup. I mean, it's for the, the title, right? You know that. We all know we have Saturday to focus on, but the thing for me today, like, it didn't matter if you were 27 or 18 or somewhere in between. It meant just as much to every single one of us. And that's what makes me so proud to be a part of this team. And that's why I know we're going to give everything we got this next week. It's been a long summer. It all culminates into one game as Lansing Common takes on Inner Detroit here at Eastern Stadium. Good evening, everybody. Cameron McLaren here joined alongside Luca Maloney, Luke Sloan, and a special guest that will be in the broadcast booth tonight, Coach Josh Oakley is here in the press box. But before we get to him, Luca, this is a game with title implications. Silverware can be won tonight if either of these two teams takes the full three points. And taking a look at what has already gone on here in the past month. At the end of the day, it is a soccer game, and you sometimes win, you sometimes lose. Here's a chance for Selvin. He's going. Gershom Selvin. Gershom Selvin. Massive goal here Selvin. before halftime. That'll work. Is in. Gershom Selvin once again scores for Lansing Common and sends this record-breaking home crowd into a frenzy. There's not a better time to score a goal. And you see we're already into stoppage time. It's interesting because I'm saying to myself, let's get out of this half, nil-nil. But I'll take one nil. All right? I just thought, well, let's see the half out. You get the next goal, they're done. We're dialed in and ready to go. All right? Come on, boys, let's go. See this out. Come on. The outswinger. That's a diving header yeah. from Aguilar and straight into the waning arms of Brandt. They're starting to simmer a little bit here in Detroit. That's two free headers on corner kicks right in a row. Uh, need to sort that out. Ethan will do a good job of that. With space, trying to work around Wishmont. Out top for Yono. That's a good one. That and that one sneaks by the glove of Ethan Brandt. There's absolutely no reason to panic here for the, the thousand patrons in the stands. Coach Sorg is, is on it. Within the game, we talked about a few pieces, just about maybe some pressing points. And we had tweaked some set pieces because 
the game can come down to those moments. Right side of Gerson Sylvan taken down. I want you guys to watch this because it's a special kind of connection between Mark and Munir. And this and is exactly the range that they could go from. This, this, is, this is in shooting distance here. I just want you guys to watch this. A oh, little tricky. Oh. I don't know that you ever expect fewer than a thousand people to be that loud uh, or to provide that kind of crackling, contagious energy. It was a really special environment. Stories, whether they be in real life or in Hollywood, we tend to assign them always with a sort of romantic, happy ending, right? He's the latest person from either team to go into the books. Page, well out of position. To Kearns. Kearns with the right foot, and that one sneaks through! Luke Kearns! Just moments after Lansing Common takes the lead. It's a gaff at the in between the sticks. And we're tied once again. A good cut with his right foot. Send it straight through Ethan Brandt. In this particular moment, again, you have to get your wits about you. You have to concentrate. You have to slow down and calm down. That's what happens. Teams that figure out a way, I think that was the moment. We're level there. We're thinking, can we go find another one? As we are into stoppage time, looking up for Sylvan. Reski able to collect it first as Inter Detroit can have numbers forward. Kearns trying to get the backtrack was Wishmeyer. It'll find Bros. And in on goal, Cavelli. Cavelli with a chance. It's Giovanni Cavelli as Inter Detroit jumps on top of Lansing and jumps on top the Midwest Premier League East Division table. It's Inter Detroit three, Lansing Common two. You always, as a coach, you always look back and go, man, if I had gotten this sub on quicker, maybe this doesn't unfold like it is. And you have to live with that and you have to learn from it, right? Just like our players do as, as coaches, you have to learn from it and, and certainly I did. And, you know, I would lo love to have it back, but you know, it just makes you better in, in the long run. For me in that moment, it really was a dumbfounding moment uh, to come from our austere beginnings pre-COVID in Ozone's sort of talking about, so this is our idea, to making people believe in and care about something so much. If we've learned one thing about this club and our supporters and the core group of players that we've put together, it's that they respond to adversity. And I think that says something about the character of the guys, but also about the, the values that we believe in as a club. Good to see all of you. Uh, Brent Sorg, I'm the, uh, some of you know me, I'm the, the head coach. Lansing Common has a, a, a rich tradition. Even though it's only been two years, entering year three, the talent level is high here. The expectations are high. It's about only one thing. What the club represents for the community and the values that it stands for and playing for the supporters and the board and everyone in the Lansing community, it's so important that we put on a good product.